So the way you would think that you want to deal with stress is you should stress about things that oh God, so are you stressed about something you can control, you cannot control? If you're stressed about just the day and not its effect, then you can control the day. It's somebody else's in control. So you can't really help yourself there. And if you're stressed about something that you can control, then any minute you spend worrying about that stress, you're taking away time from prepping for that. So you know, so you can worry about how other people think, you see that is, but if it's a date set by somebody that can't change, worrying about it will never change that. And if it's about your own preparation, Moise, and you're worried that you will not do well, then mitigate. So you think about what factors have to improve for you to not worry. I'm sure you recognize that fact factors will involve things like your own knowledge and understanding. So spend every waking minute improving that, you know, that's how I deal with not stress. I just think I'll have less time. So let's just not waste any time. I don't think about what's going to be left at the end. I just keep doing it at a faster pace. Sometimes I don't think about too far in the future. It makes life a little easier. Just think about what you can control and what can you control? Tell me your own prep. So control that and you will control everything. Hmm? That okay. So let's take the class. It might be a little slower because we're just getting off the ground, but I'll, I won't mind going over time. You know, so, yeah. So this paper, right? This paper seems to have, you see the paper you guys have? But it's really it's true, Moise, if you just focus on, you know, hey, shit, I haven't done much, let's say, then just start doing, stop thinking about it. Like, don't think, uh, like, uh, yeah, keep your mind busy with doing and not thinking. The less you do, the more you have time for thinking. So if you ever think about people who are doing hard labor, physical labor, while they're doing it, they're not thinking too much. They're just struggling with the hard labor. So just keep doing it. Yes, you might say, well, I'm struggling with trying this hard. I'm spending too much time doing this. Those are things you want to worry about. Like do them, not spend time thinking about something. You know? All right. So guys, do you have any requests in this paper? This is a long, uh, this is 10 questions. There's a question on amino acids. There's a question on NMR. There is a question on phenylamine. There is a question on acids, carboxylic acids. There's one on copper. There's one on cobalt and transition. Like number five seems like 14 marks. Number three is on energetics. Number two is Ka. I think that looks a little, a little different, but not too much. And number one, it seems to be current and then delta s so I'll, i like number one i think one and two are nice yeah so more is one and two so more one two three also okay so huh three seems easy but okay we could do three also mm -hmm. and ten so let's start with one two three and ten would that be okay and let's see where this takes us Yes, sir. As you say, sir. You see, I'm now getting sight. I am. I am getting sight. I am getting sight. Who is this person doing this paper? Oh, wait. His name is. Yes. 
have but that a billu barber or yes the ones that you have to learn umar yes cobalt and copper yes okay so in this question the question starts off with when dilute sulfuric acid is electrolyzed by water is electrolyzed by water splits up into hydrogen and oxygen in the ratio of 2 is to 1 and they're saying the current of x amperes is passed through the solution for 14 minutes and they've given a certain volume of hydrogen gas being produced at the cathode so they've already given you the volume what they're expecting you to be able to convert that into moles now if you're measuring this at room temperature then what you start realizing is that if it is a room temperature then uh, what does you happen at room temperature uh, that one mole of a gas occupies 24 dm cube or 24000 cm cube that's what you want to use so basically number of moles of a gas is volume over 24000 cm cube so if the volume is in cm cube so 642 462 divided by 24000 And when I do this math, what do I get? Yeah, it'd be nice to have the math in front of me. This gives you zero point zero one nine two five. Zero point zero. Now this is an exact value, so I will not round off this value. And to make hydrogen gas, you see, you got to write the equation for the release of hydrogen gas. So you want hydrogen ions gaining electrons, and each hydrogen ion gains one electron. And two hydrogen ions gain two electrons. That's the balancing to make one hydrogen gas. So the ratio of hydrogen and electron is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, ratio is. Uh, calculate the number of electrons transferred to produce this. So this ratio is two is to one. and how many moles of hydrogen do you have you have this many moles of hydrogen now if somebody ask you what the number of hydrogen molecules is you can either give the exact number or you can leave the answer in moles so this was moles i think they wanted a number so i missed out that part okay so you take is you convert this moles and you convert that uh, into the actual amount by using this formula right this number of particles which is uh, capital n is number of moles into avogadro's constant in this case avogadro's constant is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 so you multiply these two numbers you'll get the uh, the number of hydrogen molecules in three significant terms it comes out to 1.16 times 10 to the power of 22 1.16 now this is the number of hydrogen molecules all right but and the ratio is 2 is to 1 so either i can do this with moles or the number of atoms or ions so it doesn't really matter so the number of molecules so for every one molecule you need two electrons so for 1.16 times 10 to the power of 22 molecules how many electrons will i need twice as many that will be i think 2.32 times 10 to the power of 22 now obviously if they are normally in most cases they ask the number of moles so this is number of moles is you know what is it number of moles uh, this was the number of moles and for electron there would be twice as many moles or twice as many particles yeah that's what we have now the next part can be done one of two ways okay if they had taken the mole root the way we do quantity of charges we do quantity of charges number of moles of electrons into faraday's constant which is 96500 because faraday's constant is coulombs per mole of electrons and you'll take moles of electrons that's one way of doing this the other is finding the charge of this many electrons you see that is basically the charge of an electron the charge so basically it's the electron's charge into the number of electrons so i which is if you look at the data booklet and the, uh, that is the uh, data given in the paper at the end the charge for one electron is 
वन पॉइंट सिक्स टाइम्स टेन पर माइनस नाइनटीन कूलम्स एंड हाउ मेनी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स डू आई हैव टू पॉइंट थ्री टू टाइम्स टेन पावर ऑफ ट्वेंटी टू नाउ आई दर यू डू द मैथ दिस वे यू गेट द सेम आंसर एस यू डू डू द मैथ दिस वे ना यू माइट से बिलाल वॉट आर द नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स वेल आई ऑलरेडी हैव द नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ हाइड्रोजन मॉलिक्यूल राइट इफ यू नंबर जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन नाइन टू फाइव एंड इलेक्ट्रॉन्स वर ट्वाइस एज मेनी इन टू नाइन सिक्स फाइव डबल जीरो एंड इफ यू डू द मैथ यू शुड गेट द सेम आंसर फॉर बोथ ऑफ दम लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल द गाय ऑन द लेफ्ट जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन नाइन टू फाइव इन टू टू इन टू नाइन सिक्स थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड गिवस मी थ्री सेवन वन फाइव पॉइंट टू फाइव कूलम्स एंड देन वन ऑन द राइट इज also approximately that 1.6 times 10 power minus 19 into 2.32 times 1022 is that's about 3712 obviously the error is only of for rounding off at the four significant figure the first three significant figures are the same for both of them so that's okay either or is fine whichever part you take whichever method you take obviously the parts the way they were done they were expecting you to do the part on the right but both are equally correct okay and i think i wrote the ratio here wrong i'm so sorry when i was in a hurry this was supposed to be 2 is to 1 i did the right math i just wrote the wrong ratio for one hydrogen we have two electrons so 1.16 needs twice as many and that's the twice as many part if you did the cross multiply that would be the case and you would get this answer So I did the math right. I just wrote the value wrong there. All right. So far, okay, guys. Any questions? Hmm hmm hmm. No? Yes. Hmm. The the crowd is good today. I like it. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing all right? Okay. Then, then says calculate the current passed. Okay. So I have the quantity of charge, and current is simply quantity of charge is current into time. So quantity over time is current. And what's the quantity? Three seven one five or three seven one two, whichever one value you want to take, right? Three seven one two divided by they has a certain amount of minutes. Okay, what is the minutes? Fourteen minutes, right? So fourteen minutes means you want to do it in seconds. So fourteen times sixty. The time has to be in seconds, guys. So that's what I have. So basically, let's take the Three seven one two divided by fourteen uh, times sixty. That'll get you four point one four, four point four one nine, which is four one nine. Sorry, four point four one nine. That rounds off to two. If I take in thirty seven one five divided by fourteen into sixty, what do I get? Four point four two two. Same thing. This gets you four point four two two. This gets you four point four one nine. They both round out to the same four point four two in three significant figures, and that's your answer for the current. Yeah. Then let's scroll down to the next part. Now the next part of the question is got to do with entropy changes. So they're giving you the standard entropies of all the things in the equation, and they want to find the delta s. And remember, delta s is what? This it's the sum. Of the entropies of the products minus the sum of the entropy of the reactants. So here, what are the products? Two hydrogens and one oxygen. So it's two times one thirty one plus two zero five minus the reactants, which are two times water. So what is water? Two times seventy. And you do this math. It should give you the answer. This should give you a positive value of three hundred twenty seven. Joules per Kelvin per mole, but when you have to find delta G for the reaction, if they've given you delta H, remember delta G is in kilojoules, right? So you gotta convert the delta S into kilojoules. 
So I have delta G is delta H, which is plus 572 minus T delta S. So minus T, T is 298, right? So minus 298 into what? Delta S, which is 327 over a thousand. I divide that. And then this, this becomes 0.327 times 298. That becomes a minus value. And the overall is 52, 572. The delta S would, delta G would come out to be something like plus 474.6, which becomes 475 in three significant figures. If you want to leave it in three significant figures, okay? Up to you. 474.6 or 475, either or works. I just use the exact value if I can. And that is that. Obviously, they're saying predict the effect of increase on temperature. Well, let's talk about that. Spontaneity means delta G starts to decrease to become less than zero, negative. In this case, as temperature increases, you would say T delta S increases. And minus T delta S overall becomes more negative. And you'd say, therefore, delta G decreases and reaction becomes spontaneous at high temperatures. That becomes more feasible, more spontaneous because delta minus T delta S becomes more negative. Yeah. And that's this beautiful one question done. All right. Somebody asked a question about the mocks tomorrow or day after. Okay. Hmm. Okay. 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 Or so now, or the question was there. Is there? No. It's going. Everything is right. Chalega? Chalega? Next question? Yes, no, maybe? Umar wants to do NMR next. Umar, Umar, Umar. Uh. Thank you, Aisha. Appreciate it. Today is what day? Today is April 24th. Sorry. Yeah. Mm hmm. Is that okay if I do NMR first, guys? Ibrahim wants to do... I will do question number two, Ibrahim. Don't worry. Okay, I'll do two and then Ibrahim. NMR, then number two. All right, how about that? See, okay? So NMR was question number nine, right? Yeah, why is somebody calling me on Eid? I don't even have their number. Now they hung up. It's okay. Right? Screw them. All right. Let's take a look at this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is this the one? For NMR? Okay. Mass spec be here, NMR be here, and some organic be here. Let's do all of this. Hmm. All right, in this question, compound T is made in a three stage process. Okay, we'll find out what T is in a second. First, they take phenyl ethanoic acid. So 
there are one and two carbons and then the benzene ring yeah and now uh, and benzene sorry the acid part is becoming an acyl chloride so right off the bat i know what this is this is just you add either pcl5 add rtb you know that works you could have also added pcl3 but you have to heat it or you can add socl2 and you got to heat it so all these three reagents work here you can use any of the three obviously they only ask for reagents so you don't have to give the condition and then part r you now have an acyl chloride that reacts with an amine you know and an amine makes what an amide so what's the function group formed in stage two we already answered it it's an amide now what's the other product that forms you must recognize that one h is lost from here and the cl is lost from there so what else do they make they make hcl as a small molecule see the other product is hcl gas don't call it hydrochloric acid that would be wrong that would be in this case hcl gas all right Haya, the study of it has transferred to AS does not mean it won't be asked in the A2 papers. Please be prepared for them to ask it in A2 papers also. Okay. Then if I scroll down, sorry, quick, quick, okay. This in stage three, now we have the amide. Look at the beautiful amide. Becoming what? Oh, the CO is becoming CH2, NH2, NH, sorry. CO, NH becoming CH2, NH2. So removing one O and adding two hydrogens. This is the reduction of amides to amines. What do you use for the reduction of amides to amines? You got to use a strong reducing agent. Yeah. Generally, people remember this. This is LiAlH4. They want the formula. Now, they didn't want the conditions, but this is in dry ether. You know, that part is extra. Ether is a solvent, it's mixed in, not aqueous. So, it's LiAlH4. Name the type of reaction this is. Please don't call it redox. You have to give it in terms of what's happening to the organic compound, and that is reduction. So you say the organic, and if they ask for an equation, remember, any CONH actually reacts with four hydrogens, four new hydrogens as hydrogens from a reducing agent. Two of them replace the H, oh, sorry, of the and CONH. CONH's CO is repla replaced by two H's. And two other H's combined with that O that was just removed to make water. That's where the four H's go. If they ever ask you to write the equation, just revising that part right here, okay? Then we go to part D. Then they're saying the relative abundance of the molecular ion peak is 62. They want us to calculate the abundance of the M plus one peak. Now, ethylamine is what formula? Ethylamine is CH3, CH2, NH2. Now, how many number of carbon atoms are here? You already know there are two. And remember, you might say, hey, they've never asked this, but the math still says the same. The ratio of M and M plus 1 is supposed to be 100 is to 1.1 N, where N is the number of carbon atoms. And currently, the abundance of the M peak is 62. So the abundance of the M peak is 62. What is the abundance of the other peak? Now, you already know what N is. N is 2. So what they're saying is, cross multiply these two. So 100 into x is equal to 62 into 1.1 n, n is 2. So you multiply by 2. And you solve for this, right? Uh, if you solve for this, what do you get? You get 62 times 1.1 times 2 divided by 100. You get 1.364. So the abundance is in three significant figures, 1.36. The actual value is x is 1.364. All right. Now, this is the way to calculate the, this is the formula right here. 
the m and m plus one ratio is 100 is to 1.1 n sometimes they give you the abundance here they ask you for the abundance by giving you the number of carbon atoms okay now the last part of this mass spec is the mass spectrum of t contains several fragments now mass spectrum has moved to the as but if you notice if t has a benzene ring they cannot ask the mass spectrum of t in as they have to ask it in second year chemistry you see because it's it is second year organic chemistry so let me just take my benzene ring and the whole compound there nh i'll actually in fact just copy this fellow here and move it down you know oh it's gone it's gone let's just cut it i'll just cut it and then why because i'm i want to know the structure at the bottom so i can answer this question right here let me paste it here okay so it's now here so now they want to peak at 29 and 91. now what's the whole mr also you should have the whole mr in mind it makes it easier so you see you have the whole structure is c6h5 that's the whole uh c6 then you have a ch2 then you have another ch2 then you have nh and then you have a ch2 ch3 now if i know my math correctly a ch3 is 15 a ch2 is 14 n is 14 so nh is 15 ch2 is 14 ch2 is 14 and c6 h5 is i think 65 12 times 6 is no no 72 Oh, no, no, no. C6H5 is 6 times 12 is 72 plus 5 is 77. My bad. So it's 77. You just have to work out which, which sets of these groups together makes 29 and 91. If I want 29, I won't start from this side because this side gives me 77. I'll start from that side. And when I do, you notice something. You notice that 15 and 14 make what? 29. So these together must be 29. So either you can say CH3, CH2 plus, or because they want the structure of the ion, you see, not the molecular formula. But if they have wanted the molecular formula, you would just say C2H5. Okay. But since they want the structure, I won't give them the or. I'll actually give them the C2H, CH3, CH2. And then which structure gives them 91? Well, what is it? 77 plus 14 gives you what? Well, 77 plus 14 is 91. There you go. Therefore, this fellow is either you can make the benzene and say this plus or CH2 plus, or you can write C6H5, which is also acceptable, CH2 plus. C, that's supposed to be a C, by the way, not a 6, right? CH2 plus. You shouldn't write C7H7 plus. That would be the molecular formula of the ion. They ask for the structure of the ions formed. Okay. Right. Awesome. Done. Any questions about this? Mm hmm. No, then I can scroll down to the last part. Then part E is now talking about T's uh, NMR. So the proton NMR of T shows hydrogen atoms in different environments. So A is all the hydrogens in the benzene ring. B is the CH2. C is a CH2. D is an NH, also a labile proton. E is CH2. F is CH3. So there is a CH3 right there. See, if you make it, B is a CH2. C is a CH2. E is a CH2 and F is a CH3. Remember, B has adjacent protons on C. C has adjacent protons on B. B has no protons here, but it has two protons here. Now, these don't count split, these don't cause splitting, but E has three on this side. So, think about all these heights, by the way. So, let's talk about the splitting patterns, right? Let's talk about, so basically, 
F is CH3 adjacent to CH2. So what kind of peak would F be? F would be a triplet because it'll be two plus one, N plus one, while CH2 will be a quartet. You know why? Because an adjacent is CH3. And B would be a triplet. And C would also be a triplet. Because the CH2s will, whatever, uh, cause, split each other. Now, generally, this, in this case, all five seem to be identical, right? So you can call this a singlet. Because there's no other branch here. So these are all similar. So now, and what is D? D will also be a singlet. Okay. So here, they're saying, uh, what other information are they giving you? Proton D does not cause splitting of the peaks for C and E. We know that already. Each may be one more than one or so answer all of these. Now, they also want chemical shifts. Now, the first chemical shift that you can check from the data in the question, this range is for a hydrogen on an arene, basically. A hydrogen on an arene. Now, where is the arene? A. So, this fellow must be A. Yep. Now, out of these, which peak will disappear after adding D2O? Remember, what does D2O do? D2O reacts with either OH to make OD or with NH or even NH2. So any NH or NH2 reacts with D2O to become ND and not show up in this because Ds don't show up in the NMR, only Hs do. So now, which of these four peaks will disappear on adding D2O? It would have to be peak number D, the one that's NH. Yeah. I hope you guys are following this. Okay. Then what does it ask? Identify the protons whose peak is a triplet. Hey, we already did that, remember? So we did a triplet that is B, C, and F. B is a triplet because this neighbor is CH2. C is a triplet because this neighbor is CH2. And F is a triplet, even though it's CH3, but its neighbor is CH2. So what do we have? B, C, and F. Identify the proton or protons. That means there are more than one, right? So we've got B is a triplet, C is a triplet, and F is a triplet. And which has the lowest chemical shift? Well, a CH3 group at the end has the lowest chemical shift, right? So here, which one is it? This fellow, right here. Because any CH3 that's born to a CH2, that is near 1. And that's the lowest value. So here, what that would be F. F is this one right here. All right. Yeah. Capish, capish. Mm -hmm. Okay, then what up? Any questions about this? I'm just saving the, yeah. All clear? Done? No, which one? Number two, number three. Okay. Number two it is.
Hmm. This one? Let's do this. Okay, this seems to be an easy paper, by the way. The paper that has more questions is always going to be easy because they cannot ask too much complexity. The question, because they got a good, if there are more questions, there are fewer marks per question, which means each question cannot be that difficult, you see. So uh, if you're hoping for an easy paper, you want more questions in the paper. You want a nine question paper, not a six question paper. Yeah. 12 questions, you don't get 10 to hone chahiye na, at least. Come on. 12 mein to masti kar honge aap se. Hey, lo, masti kar la hon aap se mein. Wo wali kahani hai. Okay. Now, in question number two of this paper, it says, solution Y is hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid, you know, so that fully ionizes. But four chlorobutanic acid is a weak acid. And there is a pK given, therefore, we know it's a weak acid, right? So, if this is the acid, its ionization will produce Cl, CH2, three times, C double O minus and H plus or H3O plus, whichever one you want to write. Yeah. And the pH of both solutions is this. Okay. So first they want the expression only. So the expression is the H plus ion concentration into the concentration of Cl, CH through three times CO2 minus over the square brackets of the whole acid. Cl CH2 thrice CO2H. Oh my God, that part is easy. Then the relationship between Ka and pKa. Well, pKa is minus log of Ka. You can give them this. You can also give them the reverse relationship. Well, how do I find Ka from pKa? Well, either or works. You don't have to give both of them. Ka is 10 to the power of minus pKa. You can also do that. Now, they want the H plus ions in both solutions. Well, it's the same H plus ions. You know why? Because the pH for both of them is 4. That means pH is the log of H plus ions. So, H plus ions is 10 to the power of minus pH. And since both of them have the same pH, they have the same concentration of H plus ions. So, 1 times 10 to the power of minus 4 moles per dm cube that's what you have okay that's the h plus ion concentration for both of them but this acid dissolves fully and the ratio of this in solution one okay interesting so now this they want okay mm -hmm. it's for two marks all right, so what you want to do is you'd want to find the concentration of the acid dissolved in solution Z. Yeah, you want that. How do you find that concentration? Well, I have the Ka expression, and what they're really asking is this concentration that I just highlighted. So if I do the math, my Ka was, my pKa is 4.52. So what's my Ka? K is 10 to the power of minus 4.52, right? Isn't that my Ka? That's my Ka. Minus 4.52. And since they both ionize equally, if H plus is 1 times 10 to the power of minus 4, the anion, because this is not a buffer, is also equal. And the overall concentration is what you have to find. We call that X. And you solve for x first. Okay. So basically, you get, I believe, you get something like 3.3 .3 something, right? So I'll do this 1 times 10 to the power minus 4 squared divided by 10 to the power minus 4.52. Mm hmm. Okay, I think this will get it. Yeah, 3.31. So x comes 3.31 times 10 power minus 4. Now, this is the concentration of the acid that is dissolved. 
Now you might say, well, didn't give us the HCl concentration. Well, it's implied because HCl fully ionizes. So what the concentration was for HCl is the concentration for H plus ions. So the ratio of HCl to that. Now how much was HCl? This value, because it's a full, full acid. So we count the moles of HCl because all of them dissolved. But we count the concentration of the other acid by using Ka's expression. Their pH was the same, not their concentration. So this is important to know that a strong and a weak acid can have the same pH, but complete different concentrations because the full acid, a weak acid partially ionizes and you have to use the Ka to find the concentration. A strong acid fully ionizes, which means as many moles as you had for H plus ions, you also had for acid that completely ionized. So the acid is 1 times 10 power minus 4, while the weak acid is 3.31 times 10 power minus 4. So it's 1 over 3.31, which is basically, so 1 divided by 1 to the power minus 4 divided by my answer value gives me 0 0.30199 or 302. Because I get 0 0.301995, which to three significant figures becomes 1.30. So far, this has been the math. Any questions about this math? Before I go ahead. Hmm. Yeah, this is a fun question because you first had to find the concentration of H plus ions for both of them. Remember, you can have the same pH for a strong and a weak acid. All you have to do is take a much larger concentration of the weak acid and much smaller concentration of the small acid to achieve the same goals. Yeah. I know Ibrahim, I know part B hai boss. Tero, apun sabse pehle pata kar raha hai ki sab ko samaj aaya. Agya to apun thoda aage jayega. Ab apun aage ja raha hai. Okay. Then scrolling down number five, part B, sorry, not number five. Part B says a buffer of pH five is produced by adding sodium propanoate, a completely different, seems to be in salt of an acid. Okay, so we have a certain amount of sodium propanoate, we do not know how much that is, but we're adding a certain mass of propanoic acid, which if I know the MR, I can find the number of moles of. And the total volume is 100 cm cube for the solution. They want the mass of sodium propanoate that must be used to produce this buffer. Okay, so let's call that mass M. All right. <coughs> Sorry about that. Now, it's a long math, so I need some space here, by the way, right? So I like algebra, you see? When I was taught math, you know, when I was taught math, algebra became my favorite. So I'm going to use algebra here because the unknown is the mass of sodium propanoid. What we know is they've also given us the MR to make math easier for us. So there are two parts to the math. One is what? One is that first I'll find the moles of propanoic acid. So the number of moles is mass over molar mass of propanoic acid what do i get from it's five grams over okay that five looks funny right so so it's five over 74.0 that's just the mass of uh sodium the propanoic acid to get the moles of propanoic acid you see that's one bit uh, then this, by the way, that leads to concentration. You might say, Bilal, okay, so what's the concentration? Because to find Ka, remember, Ka works like this. It's H plus ions into what? Ka is H plus ion into salts concentration over acids concentration. So what do I need? I need the acid concentration and the salts concentration. So how do I find the acid concentration? Well, concentration is number of moles over volume. So it's 5 over 74 is the number of moles. I've not calculated that yet. Our volume is 0.1. So I get that for the acid part. Then I want the concentration for the salt. And you might say, well, how do I find that? I have M. So the concentration would be in terms of M. 
So first the number of moles will be m over 96 and the concentration of the salt would be the number of moles which is m over 96 divided by 0.1. So I got that also and I know the Ka which I will need and I know the pH is 5. So the pH is 5, H plus ions must be 10 to the power of minus 5. So I plug them all into this expression, my beautiful expression. So what do I have for Ka? I have 1.35 times 10 to the power of minus 5, right? And I have H plus is 10 to the power of minus 5. Salt is M over 96 divided by 0.1. The whole thing over acid is 5 over 74 divided by 0.1. I'm doing divided by 0.1 because I can simplify right now. And make my life easy. You see, the 0.1s cancel out and the 10 to the power of minus 5s cancel out. And I just solve for M that way. So I do 5 over, 5 over 74 there, take it to this side and solve for the whole thing. Let me do that now. Let me do the self solving for the whole thing. So on the left hand side, I got 1.35 into 5 over 74, which is actually 0 0.0675. Uh, actually, I'll just leave the fraction and just do it in one go. So 5 over 74. On the right hand side, all I have now left is m over 96. And you might say, Bilal, you're answering in the answer part. So I'll take it down, right? And so I take the 96 on this side also, I'll get m. So basically, 1.35 into 5 divided by 74, that whole thing into 96. I get, what do I get? I get 8.7567. 8.7567. Which becomes 8.76. Yeah, that's what we have. Mm -hmm. And this is the part maybe some people would have struggled on because buffer has that history. I don't know why. I find it to be cerebral. But then I realize cerebral is where people have difficulty. Yeah. Done. Next up. I know this is the way I've taught all my life in my video lessons also. So I did it this way. Okay. The key is this guys. Now you'll get many, uh, a few equations that get you to solve buffers. I've realized that this relationship, which is very similar to the weak acid one, except for the salt bit, this is how it works always for me. And I don't have to worry about all the things. I just do it like this. One way is obviously to calculate the concentration of salt and then find the moles at 100 cm cube and then find the mass. But that would be if man never invented algebra. You might do that. But we did invent algebra. And we just use it and never have to think about the order of the reaction or order of the math. So the way why algebra exists is that our math stays the same. And the thing we don't know, put an unknown and just continue the math and solve for the unknown. Makes life a lot, a lot easy. Yeah. So I'll scroll down to the next part of the question. Okay. Then it says some dilute sulfuric acid is mixed with a small sample of the buffer. The final pH of the mixture is close to one. Explain this observation. So now what they expect you to realize is that a buffer should not have increased the pH, right? But here the buffer did increase the pH. Why? The reason for that is that generally speaking, when you add H plus ions, there should be enough of the conjugate base to convert that into an acid. Right? Now, but this is a small amount. Okay? But if H plus ions are in excess, because that must be, because the pH goes down to 1, that's a strong acid pH. You see, that's the hint. When pH is 1, it must have become a strong acid. Now, but a buffer is a weak acid. So how does it become a strong acid? It must be there that H plus ions are in excess. So you can even start off with that. You see, okay, as, you know, pH is equal to, a pH near 1 indicates, indicates that an excess amount, excess amount, of H2SO4 is added. 
Not a small amount, but an excess amount. Now, a small, an excess amount, what does it do? Well, the excess H plus ions will convert, now in this case, convert what? The anion. What is the anion? Since it's propanoic acid, we'll convert propanoate ions, propanoate ions into propanoic acid. Therefore, no uh, conjugate base of propanoic acid left. This is basically the extra thinking part here. What's really happening is there is no more buffer left. It's all finished. Okay. There is no longer a buffer present. Because the buffer has to be present when you have a weak acid and salt of the weak acid. We have converted all the salt. And you might say, Bilal, how do you know that? Well, it's called deduction. I deduce from the fact that that's the only way to get the pH close to 1. So if it's a buffer, it would not have had the pH close to 1. It would have stayed at the pH near 5. But it's become 1, which means it's no longer a buffer. That means the H2SO4 has completely wiped one of the two things that make a buffer. Now H2SO4 is itself an acid and a buffer is made up of a weak acid and a salt of the weak acid, which is a base. So H2SO4 must react with the base. That is what must have happened. And that's how you get the final two marks in this lovely question. Yeah, you can write this or you can show the equation. I wrote it in English. You can also write the equation and not write half the things in English. You can say H plus XS reacts with propanoate ions to make propanoic acid but the equation will not just help because you have to also say that all of the propanoate ions have become this and there is no more buffer present okay all the buffer all the conjugate base has been converted to its conjugate acid all right I know he must thank me because yeah, absolutely. You better, you better thank me. I'm the daddy of chemistry, so you better thanks me. You better thanks me, thanks me, because you see, I'm happy. I'm happy, Bella. Oh, it's Maghrib is on now. You know, I'll take a break for five minutes in about two minutes, okay, to quickly pray. You know, guys. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Azan is happening. I'll answer that in a bit, uh, Shamia. All right, Shami, you Shami, you're asking how am I so energetic? Because I do a lot of drugs. Obviously not, yeah. I'm just kidding. Uh, it's a mindset, boss. It's literally everything is a hack. If you if you train yourself to enjoy something, you will find the energy. You know? But obviously sleeping also helps, right? So you can't have energy if you're not slept. 
So if you if you well slept, I played early morning basketball today. I was up at six Fajr, then played some an hour of basketball. That was awesome. Then I came back, took a little nap, re rejuvenated myself, and I had a couple of events to go to, like aftar, the aftar's kara, lunch and whatever else. And then now I'm here. But I think if you don't do something enough and you know that you enjoy doing it, and people also enjoy you doing it, people don't realize that even if I don't like it. There are enough people watching me that are actually re- depending on this, are requiring this. There, that should be enough for somebody to do a job well. When you do something that people are ex- are wanting and needing, it should de- automatically make you better at them. So that's why you should always pick something people in the world need. It's called a uh, ikigai. It's the pro. It's a, it's an idea of uh, making your life fulfilled. So find that it's Japanese. Our concept of ikigai. So, even though I have done this for twenty years, multiple times with thousands of kids, the chemistry might become boring, but the delivery means that people sitting on the other side. Which is why I feed off the energy. Even which is why sometimes when I have my first year class of AS only paper two. It's like a dead bunch of people who don't say a word, and I'm like, okay. And then there'll be a couple of annoying questions, but that's about it. And I'm like, they take the energy off. You guys give energy, by the way. You don't realize that, but you do. Thank you. I'm a glad you find it interesting. Yes, guys. I'm gonna just quickly take a Maghrib break for five minutes. We can extend the class for longer than seven thirty. Okay, I'll do it about till about eight o'clock. But let's take uh, for those in Karachi, it's Maghrib time. So I'm just gonna pray for five minutes. Be back in five minutes, okay? I'm so glad. I'm actually gonna make them even more interesting next year. You know, get some more entertainment going, okay? So this is Mag Maghrib prayer. Five minutes. All right, guys. Just give me five minutes. Thanks. I am so sorry, guys. For those who are watching Zoom, you forgot to record it in the middle. Oops. But I have the question separately solved, so that shouldn't be a problem. Mm-hmm. Nobody reminded me. Anyways, let's continue with this. Now, the once the first, uh, now you might say, Bilal, isn't all electrons going to be attracted? Well, once you attract the first electron, it becomes O minus, and when that is pulling the second electron for the second I electron affinity. You need to realize that there is a net repulsion. There is now repulsion between what? Between the O minus ion formed and electrons, as both are both are negative. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Then they want the calculated enthalpy formation enthalpy of formation of calcium oxide. Okay, then. So this is basically the whole question from here, isn't it? Mm, not really. You don't need the whole question because you don't have to use all the data because you think about it. You kind of got the oxygen gas to ions, calcium gas to ions. So I'm thinking, I might as well use a Hess cycle, where I have elements. So my elements in my box C, right? And elements are what? You see. So let's write the elements down. Actually, calcium solid and a half oxygen because it's CaO. In the first stage, you make them into gaseous atoms. So let's say the first stage is calcium two plus gaseous ions, and oxide two minus gaseous ions, and then they become an ionic solid. So these are your three stages. You see, and um, yeah, I'll put them in the middle. 
like that, and I'll make boxes out of them also, right? Because we got to, right? So that is my box, okay? Second box and my third box. And I'm gonna now make arrows. I can do it by normal bone harbor uh, Hess cycle. The orange arrow is the calcium solid to calcium two plus gas. The white arrow is the oxygen to O2 minus. The uh, yellow arrow I'm gonna make now is for the formation they want. And the purple arrow on top is the lattice enthalpy. And we have all of those things. You see, lattice enthalpy was, let me scroll up, is minus 3517. And I'll go back down, write that. Minus 3517. And let's find the orange value. It's calcium solid to calcium gaseous ion. And I saw they have given me the whole thing. See, calcium solid to calcium gaseous ion is given to me, right? That's, the, that's a value of plus 1933. Basically, if anybody's wondering, this orange arrow is 1933. It's the atomization of calcium plus the first ionization energy of calcium plus the second ionization energy of calcium. So you can use that. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, yeah, that probably works for me easier because I don't have to go through, okay, do I have atomization of calcium? No, I don't. So I can't even use the first ionization energy of calcium. There's nothing given for me. And the O2 gas to O2 minus is 951. So basically my white arrow is how much? 951, 951. So now if I look at my start to end, you see C to A to B is the indirect route and C to B is the direct route. C to A is literally 1933 3 plus the white one, 951. And then A to B is minus 3517 equals to C to B. That is my unknown. And so what do I get? 1933 3 plus 951 minus 3517. It gives me a negative value, a negative value of minus 633. So therefore, now I know my enthalpy of formation. Uh, it's a fun question. I thoroughly enjoyed this. It's not the run of the mill bond harbor cycle question. And the last part is simply about lithium fluoride and calcium oxide. And the biggest things that you notice is that lithium fluoride has one plus and one minus ion, while calcium has a two plus and two minus ion. Okay, that's one. Mm -hmm. So because, so what you say is, well, calcium on oxide has two plus and two minus ions. Therefore, you can say both ions have a higher charge density then li plus and f minus therefore what stronger attraction amongst with between between ions and that's the answer right there it's really the higher charge therefore higher charge density therefore greater attraction stronger attraction greater attraction whatever words you want to use and that was the answer, okay? Mm -hmm. It's really about the charge. Yes, you could say the size, but you know, calcium is actually larger than lithium. So the size actually didn't matter here. The charge mattered much more. A charge always matters more. You only really talk about size when the charge is the same, okay? All right, this wraps up this question also. Hmm, this is number three, tha na? Kaun sa tha? number three. Tha. Okay, then. What else? Which question next? Come on. Pick one, pick one, pick one. Pick one, pick one, pick one. Pick one. Mm-hmm. 
whenever you guys want. I can continue for another half an hour, Aisha. Moise said number 10. Okay, number 10. Since Moise and is and Umar and Papa. Papa, because Papa can't come up with a better name than Papa. Papa. Papa ji. Okay. So we do which one? Number 10. Okay. If you want to leave, go ahead. I will not mind. But I'll continue for just a bit more. Mm -hmm. Chalta? Mm -hmm. I don't know the years, Ibrahim. I don't count which years are harder than other years. My thing is always, if you want to practice more, do it from the latest paper because the language is more relevant to your paper. So 2022s are the best papers to do. And if you're done, there's no point redoing it. Just go back to older years, but also obviously the years change. So the syllabus also changes. So that's also... Uh, that's another, what do you call it? A double-edged sword. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so this one. Yeah, just taking a breather. Yes, so don't do old papers then. Huh? That's what I said. Don't, then I exactly said that, that it might not be the best thing. So don't do them. If you identify anxiety, then don't do them. Okay. Okay, so let's start this. Take a breather. <sighs> now this question is about amino acids and they expect you to be able to see the structure from the data booklet for amino acids. Since there's no more data booklets, they will give the structure to you. So let's say I gave the structure to you about valine. So valine is NH NH2, CH, COOH and on top it's a CH2 uh, four times NH2. So there's an extra amine group. Anne is saying here that the isoelectric point of valine is 6.0, which means it has net neutral at that time. That means one plus and one minus only. So if you take the structure of valine, you go in the in the pH six when it's a Zwitter ion. So what you will show is that either the NH two in the yellow became NH three plus, and the COO or CO two becomes COO minus, and the top guy stays as is. Okay. CH two twice, CH two four times, and NH two. Now you could draw that. Okay. Or you could ionize the blue one. It doesn't have to be the yellow one. You could have ionized the blue one. The blue NH2, which is CH2, four times NH3 plus. Okay? You could do that. Mm -hmm. I would not, okay? I would not uh, ionize both of them. You can also draw the skeletal structure or... I think I made the structure of lysine here. Yeah. Lysine. I made the structure. This is lysine. Oh, my bad. They didn't want it lysines. They wanted valine. So I'm going to remove this for now. Delete that. Okay. Uh, cut that out. 
I'll give you valine. Valine is similar structure. This is the valine original molecule. CHCOOH. It only has one acid group. And the top part is actually CH having a um, CH CH3 twice, which really is this skeletal. So NH2 on a C with COOH. I'll just make the skeletal also COOH. And the top part is C with two CH3s. When that guy ionized at pH 6, that means you only had one acid and one base group. So the NH2 became NH3 plus and that COOH um, and uh, that's right here. And the C has a branch of two alkyl groups. Or you could just make this NH3 plus COO minus and that. All right. AS organic is tested. Yes. Omar, the syllabus is still the same for AS organic. Yeah, it can still be. You can't say that, oh, ab ne sal mein nahi no, 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 no. They can give that. Yes. They can actually give you, and it's very likely they might just give you 30 minutes 25 out of AS. Who knows? Hmm. And that's the first part for valine. So valines, oh my bad, sorry, C double O. Uh, what did I have to do? I messed up again. See, when I'm in a hurry, I don't focus. The C double O minus also becomes, so there's an NH3 plus and a C double O minus from there. Then it says here, a solution of lysine is produced at pH seven. Now pH seven was isoelectronic for lysine. And then you add excess of pH till one, and the reaction with lysine to produce different organic ions that are not present in significant concentration at pH 9. They're saying do all the ions that are formed in the addition of sulfuric acid and draw the final ionic compound at C. A solution of lysine is produced at pH 7. Then dilute sulfuric acid is slowly added until the pH is this. Okay. Now, what do we do? Well, what's the first you you have to find the structure of lysine at pH seven. Now, where would I make that? OK, let me make that right here on top. OK, I'll choose color green to do that. So if you remember, it was NH2 CH and I, you don't have to remember it. I'll draw it out. So they had an extra. CH2 four times. NH2. This is the neutral molecule of lysine. This is not even the Zwitter ion, remember? This is the neutral molecule, I'm moving to the left. Now at pH 7, what is that Zwitter ion formed? After which you are going to add H2SO4. So let's ionize either orbits, right? So either this bit or that bit. So let's say the green NH3 plus and the green C double O minus ionizes makes life easy the extra one doesn't ionize because it has to only ionize one because the net charge is zero so that's my guy now if you notice that's my guy so if I, if i were to dissect this remember there is a nh3 group nh3 plus has accepted a proton it was nh2 a base it has accepted a proton so now it's become an acid c double o h was a base which is an acid that has lost an h plus to become a base and NH2 on top is also a base because NH2 is not a base, right? So what happens initially? What's the final pH? So now what are some of the ions that can be made from this fellow and giving H plus? So now you might say, well, okay, first of all, let me repeat that guy again. And I'll repeat it at the bottom so that I can play with that here. So let's start with H, right? So before I add the H plus from sulfuric acid. This is what it had looked like, right? This is the Zwitter ion. This is the moment before adding H plus ion, right? NH, NH2. Now I'm gonna mark some things here, guys, like I marked on top. So for example, in white, the NH2 is a base. NH3 plus is an acid. And C double O minus is a 
base. Now knowing this, knowing this, because see the data information is great if you have that all that, but knowing this is what it was before adding sulfuric acid, it says that sulfuric acid then reacts different ions that are not present in significant concentrations at pH 9.7. This is 9.7. <coughs> this is the ion at 9.7. Now you want to add H plus and you might think this is how you think about this. H plus ions are going to react with which component of the whole thing. Do H plus ions react with an acid or they react with the base? What do you guys think? Can you think about that? What do you guys think? Yep, if you thought base, you're absolutely right. So, and what I'll do is I'll duplicate this because what A and B are going to be the same guy copy, not the same guy, I meant was starting point is the same. In fact, even C starting, all three starting point are the same. But A and B are the guys that are made in the middle, while C is the guy at the end. C is like giving you excess H+. So let me ask you for C first. If you add excess H+, plus, where will all the H+, plus react with? It's excess now. Where do you think all the excess H+, plus will react with? Will it react with an acid? No. But it doesn't have to react with any one base. It will react with both bases. So the C double O minus will become C double O. And I'll put that in white. That's the extra H that came from the H2SO4. And now the other acid, because now we have excess H plus ions, right? So even the NH2 becomes what? NH3 plus. And this is now an acid with three acid groups. Acid, acid, acid. And it's a two plus ion, if you recognize that. And here there is no base group left. They're all acids, right? Meaning both the bases accepted a proton to make the final guy. So what's the guys in the middle? Now you might think, well, the reason why I did this one is because you converted both the, both the bases into the final guy. So what could be the guys in the middle? The guys in the middle could be any one of the two accepting the H+. Plus. So this could be maybe the NH2 accepting the extra. So nothing happens with the acid in both cases. I'll remove that. And let's say this is what's happening in the, let's say, in A, it's this base that reacted with H plus ions. In B, it's that base. It could be either or, but that's what's happening. So then, if that's the base, what will NH2 become? It'll become NH3 plus. And what will CWOH become? CWO. CWO minus becomes CWOH. So now, that's the base. So now, what you see is in A and B, there is now an acid, an acid, and a base. An acid, an acid, and a base. So one of the two bases were converted to an acid. <coughs> and in C, both the, all the bases were converted to acids. Yeah? That's the cool part. So, Zwitter ion, so start, we started from there, and then the NH3 plus is the acid. So nothing happens to the NH3 plus. Notice it stays the same. In one case, one of the NH2s become NH3 plus, and the other case, the CWO minus becomes CWOH. And in the excess case, both the bases gain. The, so look at the change from the overall guy, top right guy. So when A, the NH2 became ionized, it become, because that was acting as a base. In B, CWO minus acted as the base. And in C, because we have excess H plus ions, both of them act as a base. All right? Follow? Now, most candidates found this challenging. Some candidates could deduce A and B. And so what you also realize is that A and B have a net charge of one plus. 
while C has a net charge of 2 plus. Okay? Mm -hmm. Draw the structure 3 and draw the organic problem, problem. Yeah. So that's those who got this right figure out the fact that they are going to be different ions. Okay? Now, A and B are not at 9.7, guys. 9.7 is the guy on top. A and B are what forms when you start from 9.7 and go lower to 1. They are the in the middle, guys. So basically, the pH started from 9.7 and dropped down to 1. In the middle, you had A and B forming when you had some H plus ions. And then at the end, you have excess H plus ions. That's how you got C. 9.7 was a Zwitter ion that is made right here on top. That's the start. That was a starting material. And the, when I, obviously, if you start from 9.7 and you add H2SO4, think about the pH. Obviously, the pH is going to decrease because you're adding H plus ions. And what do H plus ions do? They lower pH because they're acidic. Okay. Okay. And then they want the structure of the dipeptide val lice. Now, val lice means the val is contributing the COOH and the lice is contributing the NH2 in the dipeptide link. And if you remember, the val was, uh, let's say, COOH like that. COOH, COOH, yeah, like that, and NH2. Yeah. And lice was, uh, let's say, a different color. NH2, C, C, let's call it that, and C, no, no. And it had CH2, CH1, CH2, 3, 4 CH2s, and then NH2. I mean, I, you could draw skeletal or you could draw condensed, whichever version, they wouldn't care. So this is what's happening. And, uh, you know, the final version is Val would be, because they would have given you the structure. So don't worry about the structure, they would have given you the structure. So that's that, that. And a CO bonds to the NH. And then the NH is, this flips over, because then that's how you make it, COOH. And then you got a CH2, 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 NH2. One, two, three, four, yeah, like that. So that's your dipeptide right there. A dipeptide has a peptide linkage. And val lice, the sequencing, when they write val lice, they mean val gave the acid group and lice the amide group. All right? Mm -hmm. Sir, that point that you mentioned about Val having the Ku group, Ibrahim actually, yeah, yeah, it'll be you'll be you'll be penalized. This, the sequence would be out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this was not a very long question, but I'm sure had some people troubled. So that ends this question. Also, okay, this is question number ten, right? So, then that also, uh, all right, what else? Done five questions. I think five are good for today. Is there anything that's bothering you from this paper more? Yeah, yeah. Post Ramzan, definitely better, dude. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Okay, what what more? Is there anything more I can do for you? What do you mean do you have to make them NHCO? What do you mean keep as is? What does as is mean, Ibrahim? How else will you show them the bond? There's a bond made now, right? They're not just holding hands and loving each other. They're actually making bonds by losing atoms. So the NH2 becomes NH and the COOH becomes CO. The other end is not an amide. That would be a polymer. This is a diamide. So the other end stay COOH and NH2. They don't react. Nothing happens to this end, nothing happens to this end. They stay as is. 
Yeah, the rest looks pretty lame and easy. Yeah. How about we go now? Yeah. You all take the paper five class. That's tomorrow, right? Many of you take the paper five class also. Right. If I have to make it earlier, like two, three hours earlier, would that be okay or no? If no, then I won't change it. I'm just asking. Okay, one is fine. Others? This time, no, I meant it was earlier, like, uh, because again, people are still, it's still Eid holidays and there's still invites happening every hour. So I was just thinking because I have a kids event with my daughter. So I thought I could start early, like 1.30 in the afternoon for Pakistan. Ibrahim, about uh, 75, 80 have bought the course, I think, or more. 20 or show up for class live. 1.30 Pakistan time would be like 70, uh, sorry, 11.30, Saudiya time. That works just for one day. No, no, just for tomorrow because of the Eid and everything, you know? Mm -hmm. Chalo. Just, uh, uh, I'll email you guys, okay? All right, done? Okay. So, let me let me change it earlier, okay? So let's do it earlier uh, at 1.30, okay? I'll also email everybody. So paper five class is 1.30 tomorrow, okay? Done. Bye-bye.